Hello, everybody. You're listening to Chris Hutton, researcher at the Free Market Foundation. Thank you very much for joining me on this, the latest episode of my solo podcast. Uh, this week, I'll continue the theme of talking about Ayn Rand and her philosophy of objectivism. This week, I've chosen an essay from a collection of, uh, of some of her essays called Capitalism, the Unknown Ideal. And this particular essay is titled, Is Atlas Shrugging? Now, in this essay, she elaborates on some of the themes in her book, Atlas Shrugged. For those of you who haven't read it, and of course, I would recommend, highly recommend that you read it as soon as you can. I know it's big and perhaps a bit intimidating, but read it in parts, uh, chew over some of the ideas, and, and you try and incorporate what she says on a range of topics. Um, but to me, Atlas Shrugged, broadly speaking, is her presentation in novel form of her philosophy of objectivism. Broadly, the theme is what would happen to the world if productive people or men of the mind, this also includes creative people, went on strike if they left society, and not just in South Africa or in America in her case, but societies around the world. What would happen to those societies if those kinds of people left? If only the politicians and um, people who think similarly to them were left in charge. Um, there's also the, the, the concept of what would happen if people were punished for their virtues, for example, for producing, for making uh, good of their lives, for producing wealth. What would happen to societies if these people left? Uh, Rand has, uh, provides a quote in this essay where she says, people often asked her what was the purpose of the book, and she sort of had this formulation in her head where she said, and I quote, the purpose of this book is to prevent itself from becoming prophetic. So she's trying to illustrate what would happen if um, if societies followed through on the philosophical ideals of collectivism. And she's trying to show why in Atlas Shrugged this would lead to the total collapse of productive society. Now, if you tie this to South Africa, there's a few examples we can look at. Uh, for example, high taxes, the bailouts of SOEs, which are unproductive, um, entities which have failed time after time, but they're almost rewarded for their failures the notion of expropriation without compensation and the state taking our property so we're no, lo no longer able to own anything. Uh, we can't build businesses and homes and invest in the country without fear of the government taking it. And then lastly, the attempt to socialize all healthcare under government control in the form of the National Health Insurance, or NHI. Just on that last point and tying this to some of what Rand says in her essay, um, you need to think about what incentives are there for people to remain in South Africa? And for example, the NHI, what incentives are there for doctors and healthcare workers to stay? Um, none apart from that they're told it's their duty to care for their fellow man, to care for their fellow South Africans. Uh, some people of a certain race are told that they have, you know, a certain privilege and therefore they have to give back and it's all done by force. There's nothing appealing to people voluntarily. It's all said, you have to do X, Y, Z. There's no, um, there's no trade involved. There's no appeal to people's rational free minds. It's all done on the basis of you have to do this because it's more, it's your duty for you, to, for you to do so for other people. Not it's about increasing your own wealth or looking after your family, anything like that. You always have to do for other people. Um, and then you can consider, I guess, in your own personal lives, uh, maybe go and read this essay um, by Rand and then think about what incentives do you in your own life have to stay in the country. We all have to decide for ourselves at what point we maybe want to leave or, or will be forced to leave. I know many people simply don't want to leave. They really love South Africa. They want to stay here, raise their children here. but. The situation might get so bad that they simply have no choice. There are many other places to go, many countries to go to. It might be very difficult to immigrate to some of those, but more and more people are looking at those options because of this whole list of things that keeps on uh, battering against us in a way. You can also think about labor regulations and how difficult it is to start and grow a business. The politicians and government also almost in a way want to be the gatekeepers of who gets jobs through all the, re the labor regulations that they impose. Think again about the SOEs, ESCOM and SAA. We read almost weekly or monthly about their failures and they keep on getting rewarded for that. Whereas productive business people are punished for, you know, what, what is said that they don't contribute enough, they don't give back to society. That false view of if you're productive, you must have taken it from someone and therefore you need to give back in different other ways. Um, for example, corporate social investment, corporate social responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, these are all views that have um, the, the, the basis of bringing people down, not of rewarding them or 
holding them in high esteem for how productive they've been. I think for each individual person, it should always, you should at least always feel that it's your choice to make whether you want to stay in a place or not, whether you want to stay in a particular point in your life or not, how much are you willing to take, how much are you willing to eat up in a way. Uh, just touching on Atlas Shrugged, and I don't want to give away any specific spoilers, of course, but some of the characters such as um, Hank Reardon and Dagny Taggart, they're both very productive business people and they want to keep their businesses afloat and keep making things work as best as they can, even though the country is falling apart uh, all around them and politicians gain more and more power, but they're just trying to do their best. And even for them, they have to decide at what point is it is, is enough enough. When are they going to leave and take their, their productivity, their knowledge, their skills elsewhere? I want to tie this back now to that topic of socializing healthcare and the NHI, just as one specific example of, I think, this attitude in society in general. So we say, for example, that people have the right to healthcare, and that's used as part of the justification for NHI. Every South African should have you know, equal access to healthcare, have the same level of healthcare, uh, things like this. But there's no consideration of where those services and tools are going to come from. Uh, it's just assumed that these things are out there and that people will keep on producing them. Well, I think that's a patently false view. These things will not continue being produced if people are punished, um, if they're forced to act in certain ways, to live in certain ways. They're simply going to leave the country and take those skills with them. And then those those things are going to dry up. They're not then they don't grow on trees, you know, to put it that way. Um, someone has to actually produce the tools and services that we use. And the more difficult we make it for them to, to, to run their businesses um, in any particular way, the, the less reason they have to, to stay um, and provide those services. And I just, I also want you to keep in mind what you expect of yourself. Do you consider your contribution to society, your um, moral imperative? Do you consider your own life your moral imperative? Do you consider a commandment from God your moral imperative? All of these things sort of weigh on these considerations of how much you're willing to take and how much you're willing to give. So um, you should probably try and figure out clearly at what point too much is, is simply too much. We know that the president announced his new cabinet yesterday evening and we'll see if that has any material difference on the country moving forward. I personally don't think it will. I think it was pretty much a continuation of the status quo. We'll talk about that more in depth on our Free Marketeers weekly podcast tomorrow. That's on Friday. If you'd uh, like to tune in for a more in-depth discussion, but just you know, tying this into what Rand is saying as well, it's sort of a continual decline of society. These things don't, necess don't necessarily happen overnight. And there are different indicators, as some of the policies I've mentioned, they indicate to you in which direction society is going. And then when you decide that for you, it's simply gone too far. I just want to end off with a quote from the essay, uh, obviously by Rand herself, that you can think about and maybe consider, um, tie these abstract ideas to concrete examples in your life and see what they actually mean. Because as I would always repeat and try and enforce, one's philosophy and indeed the philosophy of society in general determines um, what actually happens. Um, philosophy determines results and actions. So this quote, uh, through this quote, Rand says, the plane was above the peaks of the skyscrapers when suddenly, with the abruptness of a shudder, as if the ground had parted to engulf it, the city disappeared from the face of the earth. It took them a moment to realize that the panic had reached the power stations and that the lights of New York had gone out, end quote. Of course, to any South African lights going out will be very, very familiar. Maybe in the US or Europe, when the lights go out, people legitimately panic because they some, don't know what's going on and it never happens. In South Africa, we're quite used to it. Um, for our international listeners, this happens way more frequently than we would like. We can't take for granted that the lights are always going to be on. And that indicates something about the state of society, um, that perhaps a lot of productive people with all the knowledge have left ESCOM. Uh, ESCOM has grown significantly in the last few years and its output in terms of kilowatt hours has not increased with, with the number of people it's employing now compared to what it did maybe even 10 years ago. There's no correlation there. It's employing more people, but it's put its, its output in terms of electricity is, is less. So, yeah, that's just one thing. If you're maybe listening to this at home at some point and you're sitting in darkness, 
then, you know, thank you for taking the time to listen. But the fact that you're sitting in darkness shows you something about the society around you, about the state, the government, the role that it's playing, um, and that it's failing in some ways. And we need to decide if, if we're going to leave, if we're going to take other things into our own hands, um, if, you know, we're going to go completely off the grid, for example. All of this is, is up to us to decide how much we're willing to take. And I think once you sort of realize in your head that you still have that power and that control, hopefully you can start putting more pressure on the government and holding them accountable. That's probably the only way we'll see any real change, um, which as I... I guess I mentioned earlier, we haven't really seen in, in the president's new cabinet, but, you know, time will tell. We'll have to see what what manifests. I guess that's sort of the cynic in me just thinking we won't see any substantial change and just a continual decline. All right, listeners, thanks once again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this episode that I gave you some things to think about. Uh, please go and read the essay. Once again, it's called Is Atlas Shrugging by Ayn Rand, and it's from the book uh, capitalism, the unknown ideal. Please uh, remember to like and share this podcast and all of our other podcasts. Um, please go to our website, www.freemarketfoundation.com for more information. Uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And let me know in the comments below what you think of what Rand says here and I guess of South Africa in general. I hope you have a good week ahead and I'll talk to you again next week. Bye.